Hey guys, and welcome back to another HD broadcast. Today we're going to be looking at a very special game indeed. It is going to be one of the games in, in one of these ESL tournaments. I'm not exactly sure which one it is, but I've heard a lot of raving about this game. A lot of people saying it's a good game to watch. So here I am. I'm going to go ahead and cast this game. And of course, I'm super excited because we have Mad Frog playing as our Zerg player. And you guys all know Mad Frog, man. We haven't actually seen a game, seen a game of Mad Frog in quite some some time but he is a very very good Zerg player and it is Zerg versus Terran which as you guys all know is my favorite matchup to play except it's my favorite matchup to play except when there's four Hellions running into my natural expansion and roasting all my drones in fact I sometimes have nightmares. I, I like I'll sleep at night and then there'll be four Hellions running into my dream and it turns into a nightmare. So that's pretty much <laughs> that's pretty much the worst thing about Zerg vs. Terran for me. But other than that, other than Hellions, I love ZVT man. This is one of the most awesome matches in StarCraft and StarCraft 2. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and look at this game. I think it should be a pretty good matchup, unless people have been lying on the forums. But uh, oh, by the way, this is post patch 1.1. So yay, post watch post patch 1.1 one celebration commentary and as you guys can see now the production tab actually shows a little cool progress bar that's pretty neat and you know I mean that that helps us figure out how close it is to a unit being done and all that good stuff but uh farewell is obviously the Terran player here I'm not actually not sure about farewell I've never seen this guy play before but since he's in this ESL tournament against Mad Frog gonna assume uh, gonna give him the benefit of the doubt at least and say that he's a pretty good player uh, he's actually spamming away quite a bit there at averaging 233 APM good lord that's a lot of APM to be spamming away and it looks like just being a Terran player he has a little bit more uh, economy for now Mad Frog ooh gonna be going for an in base hat what the heck is going on? Does Farewell know about this? No, he does not. I think that uh, Farewell might be expecting a natural expansion, a fast expand, so that's why he's got his SCV kind of chilling there, but he has no idea that there is an in-base hatchery going up, and this can only mean one thing. It's going to be some kind of a mass speedling build coming out for Mad Frog, and I mean, a lot of people have been complaining Zerg versus Terran is so hard to do, so maybe Mad Frog here has the new strategy to play against Terran. Aaron, he's going to be going for an in-base hatchery spawning pool and gas on the way obviously this gas I think is gonna be used for speed is he gonna get three drones on there is he gonna get three drones on there not quite yet is he actually gonna what the heck is he going to build oh man he is going to be building another hatchery so he is currently at three hatcheries this is almost reminiscent of savior if you guys watch professional brood war you guys all know who savior is he is ma bonjoie and he was the one who invented the three hatchery build three hatchery in fact he did it before spawn pool and he, he usually built the three hatcheries one at each base but uh, this is kind of a cool variant of that get three hatcheries I mean why not we just saw a game with LZ gamer where he went for a double command center so you know Starcraft originally when Starcraft came out the game was all about fast rushes fast rushes fast rushes and then it kind of evolved to economy economy and that might be what we're seeing here an, an, an evolution in the game of Starcraft 2 to more economic style mad frog here has got three hatcheries up and running this is an incredible opening for our zerg and i am deeply entertained right now i'm very interested to see how farewell is going to hold this off it looks like he's going to lose that scv at the watchtower no big deal though just gonna lose that that central vision and I'm sure he'll eventually push out looks like he is gonna be opening 111 which uh, if you're a husky viewer then it's a destiny cloud fist build yes destiny cloud fist uh, <laughs> he is going to be opening the uh, barracks factory starport and obviously he's gonna try to get a fast Viking out but I gotta say wow that's a lot of drones what is the economy at mad frog is at 29 over 21 he is using all three hatcheries to just purely pump out drones and he only has one queen is he producing more queens see that there is one more on the way and I'm gonna go ahead and set myself to busy because I get a lot of messages when I uh, commentate which is which can be kind of annoying but uh, Omni sorry man I know I'm not trying to be like I'm gonna ignore you but you know you know how it is <laughs> anyways we do have oh it's an armory going up so farewell is gonna try to go for a Thor ship one thing I forgot to mention about this map is because of this ledge here it is so easy for a Terran to abuse that with a Thor if they put the Thor here here, they can just smash this hatchery with the javelin or not the javelin missile launchers the uh, the the two cannons on the arms whatever they're called the the cannon 
launchers, the arm launchers, uh, they hurt a lot. And it looks like Farewell is going to secure the LZ with a medvac. He's going to drop off an SCV and seven marines. So he's going to play a bunker, de a bunker here and possibly a bunker here. Here we go. Here comes the marines. Madfrog only has a queen to deal with this, and he does have a spine crawler. The overlord is in trouble. If the overlord gets picked off, then Madfrog will not have any vision of this high ground above. It looks like Madfrog, meanwhile, is getting a fourth hatchery up. My goodness, Madfrog is going crazy right now with the hatcheries. I don't even know what he just now started layer tech so he is really really focused on this economic build he's got 37 harvesters out right now this is so crazy opening with four uh, he has a total of four hatcheries right now we do have the dropship I think the Thor is on the way yeah there it is and oh no there's already a Thor here I guess I missed that the Thor has been dropped off into the main already this isn't looking too good for Mad Frog because with the bunker behind to, su to help support the Thor this hatchery th this hatchery's days are numbered they are going to go this is gonna go down the drones have already started to fall all that mad frog has is this spine crawler a couple of links and a queen to deal with this is the second thor on the way it's almost ready and when that second thor comes i think that might just be a very fast gg for mad frog it doesn't even matter that he has 41 drones over 25 it doesn't matter that he has all these hatcheries because if he loses this natural he loses all of this ground in front of his main it's just gonna be brutal looks like he's gonna bring all of his excess drones over to the new expansion though and there goes the hatchery plop down it goes broodlings don't even have an, uh, a place to attack and if you're mad frog right now you're probably thinking what the heck do i do against this thor on this map it is so hard to deal with it looks like he has decided to go for a spire Ooh, he has decided to go for a spire there sometimes my mouse can be extra sensitive uh, but yeah, it looks like he's decided to go for a Spire, and uh, it looks like Farewell is going to be getting a Command Center, and he's getting some Missile Turrets. He's got an Engineering Bay up. He's get actually getting a Missile Turret right here next to the Thor, so obviously he is well aware of the possibility of a Mutalus attack, but the Mutas are still a, a long way away because the Spire is still building, and meanwhile we have another Thor getting dropped off. Spinecrawler is going to fall. It goes down. Whatever you want. <laughs> sound effects. My sound effects are obviously not as good as StarCraft 2 sound effects, but uh, the Ling's gonna come in, harass the dropship, force it to pick off, and I just noticed that my health bars are not set to all, but whatever, I guess this is better for a viewing experience. Uh you don't want to see a bunch of green bars everywhere. You want to see the units. Uh, it looks like Mad Frog is not going to try to try to resecure the natural. And now we have a double Thor ship. In oh no, the spire could go down. Is is Mad Frog going to be able to produce any mutas? It looks like he has one egg for a mutalist, and then the spire falls. The spire falls. Oh, that's such a gruesome animation for the spire to go down. The broodlings and lings combined, not enough to deal with the Thor, and only one mutalist was able to pop out for Mad Frog. This is going to be really really bad. He. He doesn't have anything but zerglings he's just got mass zerglings he does have a layer up he's rebuilding his spire and there's that lone mutilus he he spawned without any brothers or sisters that is gonna be one sad sad foster child or foster child whatever, whatever they are they he's not gonna have anybody to play with or anything he's just a lone muta we do have Another hatchery going up. Meanwhile, Farewell is going to try to secure the Planetary Fortress. His income is not doing too shabby at all. And he's still continuing this Thor ship play. He's got three dropships, three Thors. So brutal. What can a Zerg player do about this? It looks like uh, Mad Frog is going to harass this Planetary Fortress. And it's going to force the Fortress to cancel. This Fortress is not going to be able to go up in time. Is Farewell going to bring... <laughs> he elevators his barracks. But he actually selected the wrong building there. He should have elevated the planet or the command center and it looks like he is going to save that and bring it back for repairs uh, the mechanics are not going to be too happy about that because that thing is really close to dying. The Terran uh, high ground defensive standpoint here continues to stay and that of course means this natural will never go up. How's the income looking for our Zerg player? 47 to 35. He's actually just now gotten the Spire back up. Wow, that was a fast Spire. Uh, well, he's got six Mutalists on the way, so those Mutalists obviously can be his saving grace. And I have to say, if Mad Frog pulls a victory out, if he pulls a victory out after losing this hatchery, I am going to be absolutely stunned and amazed. And no doubt it's going to be due to the fact that he went for this extra hatchery in the base. Really helps his production. But here we go. Very deadly drop. Oh, and intercepted by the Mutalist. The dropship. One of them going to get taken out. Not sure if a Thor fell there. If we look at the unit's lost tab, I don't think 
that Farewell lost anything except maybe one dropship, and he dropped everything off. So great play right there from Farewell, going down to the lower ledge, evacuating the forces before the Mutalist could get in there and do a lot of damage. Looks like we have a transfuse on one of the Mutas. And now the paratrooper mechanical force is going to go straight for the main, going to drop off all these doors. This is going to be very deadly. The queen falls. A bunch more Mutal is popping out. And is Mad Frog going to be able to use the magic box to deal with the Thors? He has to magic box his Mutas. I don't even know if he has enough. He might have to use his drones and his links as well. Layer in danger of going down. And here comes the magic box Mutas. That's a lot of Thors though. But the links also coming in. Is it going to be enough? SCVs trying to repair at the same time. There's even a Hellion up in the mix two Thors getting taken out the Thors are doing as much damage as they can with the javelin launchers but the mutas are too spread out with that magic box oh my god mad frog holds mad frog holds he kills off the entire Terran drop force now the dropships in danger of going down as well and they will fall there's no way that dropships can get away from mutalisks because apparently flapping wings are faster than uh than turbine jets um i don't even know the math behind that but it looks like, oh, maybe the, the dropships will get it out of there uh, safely. And, oh, man, some links running in when the barracks was elevated up. And the links are going to come in here. This could be GG. I thought that Farewell was going to be able to hold on. But for some reason, he lifted off his barracks, has allowed a bunch of links to come in. Another Thor comes out, though. This Thor might be able to do enough to save the day. I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of SCVs falling right here. If we look at the income tab, looks like the Thor falls right there, too. Oh, man, it, it's definitely over. I was going to say, if we look at the income tab, 46 to 28. But farewell there, says farewell to himself. He lifted the barracks and he allowed a bunch of links to just run inside his main. And that was pretty much GG. I, I don't see how he could have held that off. What an incredible game, man. I'm glad I casted this game. And thanks a lot to you guys on StarCraft Arena who posted this in the thread. In fact, I think it was only one or two people. But uh, I saw that post and you guys said this was a good game. And I saw Mad Frog. I was like, got to cast Mad Frog. I love this guy. And so following this game, I'm going to have a very special four versus four game if any of you guys are interested and it is going to have some pro players in there as well and with one extra twist which i will reveal when the game comes out so hopefully you guys enjoyed this broadcast and of course if you guys like what you see make sure to subscribe and of course stay tuned for more commentaries in the future thanks a lot guys hd signing out